Panther, uh, is also a winter annual and the pineapple weed winter annual. So these are the species that we generally have the problems with on station. Um, depending on where you're at, you may have some other ones that are more problematic for you or less problematic, uh, but in strawberry, typically we're dealing with these uh, annual weeds as being the bigger issue for us. Uh, so let's talk about the established trials. Um, each year we get uh, material from NorCal Nursery, which is very much appreciated. So we, we put out new trials every year uh, for both established crop and as well as the newly planted uh, trial. So on the established ones, we, we establish them all the same. So all the plots get established the same the first year. And then that winter is when we put out our applications on that first year crop. So this year, um, well, each year we got totem strawberry, so all three years were totem, so we're dealing with the same. Uh, typically what we apply is some kind of a mix of Spartan or Chateau. Um, in these last three years, we were doing a combination of those and then following it up with some grass weed control. Uh, across all the plots. So all the plots were treated the same initially. Then we do the rototilling in the fall, and so we have a fairly decent um, crop going into the winter, and then we apply the herbicides. Um, in this case, we applied them in February and January of, uh, of the dormant season. Uh, the registered products that we were really focusing on are these four down here. Chateau, which is widely used, Devernal, even more widely used, I believe. There's still some Sinbar used. We like to try Sinbar. I haven't had it in uh, trials before the last three years, and I wanted to kind of get a better evaluation for that because it does have some activity on some of the weeds that maybe the other ones don't. Uh, and this last one is Spartan, which should be familiar if you're growing strawberries. The non-registered products, these are the ones we're still evaluating and hopefully we'll get registrations for fairly recent, or fairly, fairly soon. Allion is one we've had a lot of look-sees at. I don't know what, what the future holds for Allion in strawberry. I love the weed control we get, but um, the bear folks are more interested in using Allion only on perennial crops and they consider strawberry an annual crop because that's what? California does, right? So we are trying to convince them that uh, our perennial strawberries could deal with this uh, quite nicely. So hopefully we can convince them. Uh, Dual Magnum is a product we've looked at for a number of years. Um, does help with uh, in combination treatments, as you'll see, uh, for weed control, for annual weed control. A uh, little bit of, of uh, suppression of yellow nut sedge also. So if you happen to have yellow nut sedge present in the site, Dual Magnum will be something we you'll be interested in looking at. Fierce is a combination of a, the active ingredient in Chateau as well as a, a more of a grass type of product that works well on ryegrass and some things like that as a pre-emergence product. Um, Trellis is Gallery. Um, they're coming out with a new name for berry crops. Uh, so Trellis right now is not registered but should become registered uh, down the road. Dow AgriScience is going to do that. Reflex, I just was talking to the Syngenta rep here and we have hopes that maybe we can move forward on Reflex, but uh, that, that'll be a while down the road. And Trevix is the other uh, BASF product that uh, is fairly recent. Good burn down activity, uh, not a lot of residual activity. So we looked at crop injury, we looked at weed control. Uh, we did harvest these. Typically, we, we pick them three times or four times depending on the year, and then we get a total berry weight as well as a 50, um, 50 berry average weight. So let me set up this, uh, this table here. When, when you look at the, a chart like this, th this is strawberry injury, so it's percent injury. Big bar is not good. Big bar is not good. So the larger bars are those that had significant level of injury. We want to be down here around this 15 to 20 percent level and that would be a, uh, that would be where I consider generally something that these plants recover from and we're not going to see issues with. The way I've got these set up is that notice I have Allion, Fierce, Trevix, and Trellis across the, the lower part. These are products that are used either alone with the yellow bar, uh, mixed with Chateau is the blue bar, mixed with Devernal is the orange bar, mixed with Sin bar is purple, mixed with Spartan is green. So Trellis plus Spartan, for instance, would be this bar on the end. This, this large one here is Fierce plus uh, nothing, just Fierce by itself. So you can see that the ones that really caused this problem, at least this year, this 2015, uh, were the products with Fierce in it. We also had a bit of a problem with this 
Chateau plus, uh, plus Trevix caused us a little more damage than what we would normally see. The rest of them were all around that 10 to 15% level of injury in March. Uh, if you remember the winter of 14, 15, at least for us, was a really bad winter. We had a hard time with getting the regrowth of, a, of the strawberries after that winter. And you can really see that that was the level of damage we got. The other two years in this trial that I'm talking about, we really didn't see this level of injury in March. It was almost zero as far as injury was concerned. So this really represents one year out of the three years of test. We controlled this again as a percentage number, so big bars is good in this case. This was done in May, so right before we started harvesting is when we uh, did our weed control counts. And you'll notice all of the Allion treatments, uh, 80 to 90 percent weed control. Fierce was also in the 85 to 90 percent. Trevix somewhere around 80 to 85 percent, and Trellis was down here a little bit lower. Now this is a three-year average. One of the years was really bad on weed control. The other two years generally were pretty good. Uh, so this is the average of the three years, but really one year out of three is what's bringing this number down a bit. Um, so if you're just looking strictly at weed management, Allion is a really good fit for us. Uh, Fierce also looks good, but remember that injury we saw with Fierce and Trevix. Now, if we look at berry yield, which is kind of how it all boils down, these numbers don't mean anything to you. Grams per plot doesn't mean anything. But it is a, a, a view of what yield is doing. And, and what I've got this blue line across the top is where the hand-weeded strawberries were. So if we hand-weeded, we're not going to cause damage. But these are the ones that seem to be doing better. So if you've got a bar that's above that blue line, that means uh, we ended up with yield three-year average was a little higher than the three-year average of the hand weeded. The ones that kind of stand out, remember the weed control trellis wasn't hot? That's the one that really did us a pretty good job as far as yield was concerned. The other ones that did quite well were these, these mixtures of Trevix with Sinbar Spartan. Notice also we're right on top of it or a little bit above with the Allion. So I think the Allion is something we can um, hopefully be able to convince the bear guys to uh, to move forward on. Fierce, we saw the damage early and the damage stayed with those plants. So yield was reduced a little bit with that uh, combination. So bottom line on, on these, uh, strawberry injury with these new products, Fierce and Trevix, uh, was a bit high that one year. The other years were not bad at all. Uh, weed control, fair to excellent, as I said. Uh, berry size yield was generally good, although we did see some injury with the fierce combinations and then with the, these individual treatments that uh, pointed out before. Generally speaking, Trevix, Trellis um, looks pretty decent. So I've got good hopes for that. Trellis should be coming available to us, uh, I don't know about next year, this coming year, uh, but certainly by the year after that, we should see registrations for that in the bearing crop. Let's talk about newly planted. We got, what time did I finish? Okay, so we'll move along. Uh, newly planted strawberries. Um, <laughs> I hate this cultivar. Nothing against the cultivar, but how do you pronounce this? Mr. Sakuma, what would you say? Honey, honey eye, honey away. Honey, that's what it is. It's a good cultivar, really nice fresh taste on it. So I, I love using these, but I, I just have a hard time. I'll call it H. This is cultivar H. Uh, the herbicides we typically, what, the way we usually do it is right after transplanting it. And, you know, if you read the, the labels, you're supposed to do pre-transplant and then transplant into it. How many do that? You, you follow the label, right? Everybody in the room follows the label? Excellent. Yeah. I see all the hands up. Uh, the way we do it is a little off label and we plant, transplant, and then we spray over the top. Um, typically that has not caused us any problems, but realize that things like Spartan and Chateau say you need to pre uh, apply them before transplanting. Uh, so do as I say, not as I do. Registered uh, herbicides uh, we were looking at were the same ones as uh, in the last trial. Um, uh, the non-registered, Pretty much the same ones there as well. Now, these are products in the newly planted version. Potentially, we've got a little wiggle room to go non-bearing, which doesn't require the residue testing be done. And so, potentially, we could come up with some non-bearing labels a little bit more uh, conveniently, perhaps, as a 24C or something like that. So, potentially, that would be a good uh, little area that we could aim at.
Normally we do these is right after application, we'll monitor crop injury and weed control uh, monthly or so after those applications. And then at the end of the season, either in late August or early September, uh, we collect three plants out of each plot, average plants. They're not randomly selected. They're the ones that represent pretty much what a, a typical plant would look like. And then we rip the leaves off, throw them through the leaf area meter and figure out how much uh, leaf area we have. So it's an indication of how well these plants are growing. Okay, first uh, graph. Same graph system that I had before. Um, this is weed control. So again, big bars are good. If you look at these, you can kind of see the same story that we saw earlier with a, with a couple different uh, important changes, I think. First of all, notice that this is a two-year average. Um, the year of 2014 was not a good year in our newly planted trial. Uh, it was an aberration. We had so many uh, uh, volunteer buckwheat plants, believe it or not. Buckwheat had been uh, not harvested this season before, and that's where my plots were. So I, I, I basically did all these trials to find out what kills buckwheat, and the answer is none of the above kill buckwheat, just so you know. Um, the Allion did quite well um, these other two years, however, somewhere between 70-80% control in July. So we transplant in May, so we're dealing with this about two months after, after transplanting. Um, the other ones, remember the trellis didn't do so well on the established, uh, that we were down in 50 to 60 percent level. A little bit better on these newly planted ones. So trellis in the warmer season that we, were, we see at the time of these applications seems to have a better fit for the weeds that we get growing, those summer annual type of weeds. Trevix, not so good. Uh, anywhere from, say, 45 percent up to 65 percent. Uh, in combination by itself, somewhere around that 50% level. Uh, and then the reflex um, combinations look actually pretty good when we start dealing with reflex plus dual or reflex plus Spartan in, in this case. Uh, so these are good combinations for the wheat spectrum that we had. Looking at leaf area, again, now in this case, big bar is is, is good as well because we're dealing with the most growth. The bigger bars have the, the most leaf area associated with it. Again, the blue bar on the end is the non-treated check. So these are hand weeded and here's the growth that you could expect. If you didn't do anything that hurt those strawberries, this is what you would expect. Notice that some of these products, however, we did see some reduced leaf area uh, on those plants during that two year average. Two reasons why. We may see direct chemical injury, so the herbicide itself is slowing those plants down uh, as far as the growth is concerned, or more likely we didn't get really good weed control, and when you have poor weed control, then typically we don't see the level of growth because the weeds are competing with the crop. Uh, the ones that seem to do the best, however, notice the orange bar, orange bar, orange bar. All these with Devernal, either Trellis, Reflex, or Allion with Devernal, really fit our weed spectrum quite nicely, and those are the ones that that did the best for us as far as that's concerned. The other two here that did pretty well was Chateau and Trellis and uh, Dual Magnum plus Trellis. So we have some combinations that look pretty decent and the level of growth of these plants exceeded that of the hand weeded. So uh, weed control wise, fairly decent as well. So looking at these, I think we have a, a good mix ahead looking for Allion if we can get it, Trellis which should be coming soon, Reflex perhaps, uh, and then with uh, Dual Magnum that may also be coming very, fairly, fairly quickly on these strawberries. Um, Devernal has been around for a long time, many of you use Devernal so you're familiar with it. Those combinations also look pretty decent. Uh, leaf area, as I said, was best with these products, uh, so we have some things that that really look good as far as not slowing those plants down and having a healthy crop going into the fall uh, definitely helps winter injury and some things like that. So funding for all the trials that I do, not just strawberries, are listed here. Um, Pesticide Registration Commission also uh, helps fund my products. NorCal Nursery, really appreciate particularly for strawberry material, but also for some raspberry we I've gotten in the past. Uh, cooperators, uh, herbicide manufacturers, and everybody at uh, WSU Mount Vernon who helps me out with these trials. Uh, thank them. So I've got time for questions, I think. Uh, any questions out there? <laughs> Yes, sir. Hold on one second. In my field, what's a, what's a How can I measure leaf area in my field? Um, I don't know of a really good way to do that. Uh, the little machine that we use is, is kind of like uh, uh, two transparent 
uh, transparent uh, plastic, like an overhead that it used to be, and you would run through there, and it just signs through, and it collects the, the light in uh, that's coming through from around the leaf. So it calculates all that out for us. I don't know that leaf area per se means a lot. I would say that uh, it's just a measure of the growth that you might be able to achieve. Again, uh, more leaves equals more growth, and so that's just our measure that we use to do that. We could use biomass as well, you know, weigh the plants, and it would probably give us uh, a close estimate as well. Other comments, questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, are you supposed to rotate uh, chemical usage? So I wouldn't see Devernal here all the time necessarily, right? So the I, question is regarding herbicide rotation. Normally, we like to rotate herbicides more for resistance management than anything else. Consequently, using herbicides of different modes of action is going to be the critical factor of that. Devernal is a particular mode of action. Some of these others are different mode of action. So actually, a lot of these combinations we're talking about, you're practicing already um, resistance management by using different mode of action products at the same time. So it's it's not necessarily that you don't want to use Devernal every year, as long as you're offsetting it or using it in combination or in sequence with another herbicide that also has activity on those weed species, but it kills it in a different way. Under those conditions, you're probably not going to see buildup of resistance. We're running the resistance if you're using the same product by itself every single year, and sometimes multiple times a year. That's uh, that has a lot of selection pressure and probably will lead to resistance faster. Other comments, questions? Great, thank you so much.